Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back with another sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we're rewinding back to, and see the cards that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Starting last summer, I have been stopping by with the Sheet Load Rewind. This is when I go back to an older edition of Sheet Load of Cards and either just remind you about it or update it in some way. Well, the past couple months I have missed out on doing this and I know some of you have contacted me to see if Rewind is coming back and I hope that starting with this month, it will once again be a monthly feature. If you want to see past rewinds, I do have the playlist linked in that description box below. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can download the printable for this month's rewind if you're interested in making some of your own. Do you want to find out which month we're rewinding to? Today, I'm going to be revisiting the May 2020 sheet load of cards. If you follow the sketch, supply list, and cutting guides, it's going to yield you 12 cards. Now, later on in the video, I will tell you about how you can make half as many if you want to, but if you need to stock up on cards or you might want to give some sets to friends or family, 12 is going to get you started and well on your way. Now, if you want to check out the original video where I debuted May 2020, I will have that video as well as the process video linked in the description box. But don't forget, I will tell you at the end of the video how to download this printable if you're interested. As always, it is free to subscribers of my channel. Before we get started, let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies that I'll be using today. For my sentiment or focal point, I wanted kind of a big bold sentiment with just a couple words so that I could send these out to channel members. Well, I didn't really have any stamp sets that fit that need, so I went ahead and created a printable for myself that each of the sentiments will fit within the circle size given for the sheet load of cards. Now, if you're a channel member and support me each month here, at the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can download this for free if you would like to use it as well. I will be cutting out those sentiments with some stitch circle dies from my stash. And for my pattern paper, I chose these two pieces of gorgeous goodness here. These are from Minte Paper's Beauty in Bloom collection. And these are actually the reverse sides of the same piece of paper. I just love the pretty pastel florals on this with that pop of yellow and that coordinating blue design. For my pattern paper mats, I got out three pieces of pink cardstock that I thought went well with some of the florals in the pattern paper. Now, as I add any other products or tools throughout the process, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, be sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started today by cutting my two pattern papers per the instruction on the cutting guide. Now I have noted over here on the right that once we have cut those six pieces, we will then be using this second cutting diagram to cut those down a little bit further. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if your pattern paper is double sided, you could actually just use one sheet and only yield six cards because you would mix and match the fronts and backs of these pieces for each of the cards. This would result in a little bit less cardstock used as well. 
I start by cutting two strips from the top at four and seven eighths inches tall. Now please note that special dimension, this is an eighth. And the seventh eighth inch mark is halfway between four and three quarters and five inches. Once I have that set up, I cut it and then I cut this same height off the bottom of that piece. Then each of these will get rotated and cut into six pieces that are three and five eighths inches wide. Again, this is an eighth inch measurement, so you'll want to cut halfway between three and a half and three and three quarters. And then you just keep cutting until both pieces of paper have yielded you six pieces at this size. Now we're going to follow this special cutting guide on the right and what we're going to do is stack two of these pieces together, one of each pattern and cut them at the same time. So I get one from the floral and one from the blue and I stack those nice and sturdy against each other. Then I take one and a half inches off the left and then these pieces are going to get rotated and get two inches cut off the top of each side. Now the reason that I stack these together is that I definitely know that these are cut at the exact same size so later when I go to put them on the cardstock mat they will be the same size pieces so this just helps it in case you cut just slightly a little bit different you have cut these two pairs together. Now once those are cut down, you'll see here that I mixed and matched them. So I had pieces for each of the card fronts and then I stack each of those pieces together and set them off to the side. You do wanna make sure that each of these sets is kept separate from the rest of the pieces. Once I had this first set done, then I just went ahead and did the same thing with the remaining pairs. Now we're gonna cut the pink cardstock mats per the CS1 instructions. Basically, we're gonna be cutting these three pieces of pink cardstock into four pieces that are four by five and a quarter. Now I started by cutting strips that were four inches wide, and then each of those got rotated and cut down to five and a quarter inches tall until I had 12 total. Your next step might be working on CS2, but because I have that pre-printed sentiment sheet, I'm going to hold off on that for now. Also off camera, I grabbed 12 card bases from my stash. Now you will notice that mine are side fold cards and the sketch originally calls for top fold, but you can definitely use what you have or what you prefer. The focal point for this month's card called for a two inch circle. Now I luckily did find some stitch circle dies that I have in my stash that was two inches, but if you don't have that, you could use a size similar, or here is I believe a one and three quarter inch circle punch, and that also works on each of the sentiments. Make sure to use what you have. Because the printout is too wide for my die cutter, before I could send it through, I cut the cardstock into strips that I started cutting from the right at about two and three quarters inches. Once I had those, I brought in my two inch circle die and I lined it up around the first sentiment and using a couple pieces of scotch blue removable tape, I held that in place while I sent it through the die cutter. You'll see here, once it's die cut, the tape removes easily, and I can go ahead and use the same tape on the remaining sentiments. And I actually ended up off screen cutting down 12 yellow circles to match some of the yellow in the pattern paper, and I was able to use that same blue tape for all 24 die cuts. Now it's time to get those pattern paper pieces matted. If you print out your sheet load at 100%, the sketch is actual size. So if you're not sure of where you're going to place your pattern papers, you could always place your pieces up next to the printout to help you get a good idea. For myself, I just usually try to eyeball it. So I place down the four pieces for that first card and get an idea of where each one will be placed. I do try to keep that outside border even about an eighth of an inch. When I do think it's good, 
it, I brought in my ATG and I started placing adhesive on the back. For the top left, once again, I just make sure it's about an eighth of an inch down and in from the corner of the cardstock, and then I place the lower left hand piece. When I do this, I make sure that it's an eighth of an inch up from the bottom, and I align the left edge with the first piece I place down. Then I go to the top right, again looking for that same outside border and lining it up to the piece next to it. And finally, the fourth piece just fits nicely into place. Now if you notice that your inside points, they don't match up exactly or meet exactly where they should, no worries because later that is going to be covered up with the sentiment circle. For card number two, the process is the same as what you just saw, but I did want to let you see the difference between the two depending on where the pattern papers get placed onto that pink mat. Here's a close-up look at that, and once these two were done, I just continued the same process until all 12 card fronts were ready to go. Next, I brought back in those card bases that I showed you earlier, and I started adding the matted pattern paper pieces to the front of those. I did just keep this nice and flat, and used ATG once again to adhere these together. Now it's time to get the cards finished off with those matted sentiment circles. I start by adding adhesive to the sentiment and then placing that in the center of the yellow circle. This, again, just to keep everything flat, gets put down right onto the card base, but you could always use foam tape here if you want to. Now on the first couple cards, I show you how I just did you know, each sentiment one at a time, but eventually after I had done the first couple, I did more of an assembly line process where I added all of the white circles to the yellow mats and then added those pieces to the card front. You can always do whichever process works better for you. And here's a close up look at the finished set of 12 cards. I hope you enjoyed today's rewind to May 2020. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Now let me tell you about those downloads. First off, if you are a channel member and you would like to download the free sentiment printable, over on the membership tab, should be toward the top if you're watching this video right away, I have a link to the PDF file. Now you can also find that printable on our monthly blog page and if that link is not toward the top of that membership tab, you can just scroll down a little bit to find that. While I am talking about my channel members, I do just want to give a great big thank you to all of you who support me each month. You keep me here creating and sheet load free for all of my subscribers. Now, if you have not yet downloaded the May 2020 sheet load of cards and you would like to, you can find the link at the very, very bottom of my description box below. Now, right beneath that link, it will say to watch the video for a password, but your password is just watching the video this far to find out how to download that. You can download it and print it, or you can just pull it up on screen and use it from there. Now, if you are going to share any of the May 2020 cards, please make sure to use the hashtags that you see up on screen now, which are our normal hashtags and then that special sheet load rewind hashtag. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.